Tilder. How well does HLG do with color grading and color correction? Quite good. You can actually get a lot of different looks with the HLG format like these. But is it ultimately worth it to shoot an HLG versus the other color profiles? Ah, it depends. Done. Roll that intro. What's going on, everybody? You're watching Too Long Didn't Read Filmmaker, where the answers comes first, the reasons come last, but we're constantly and always still learning. So continuing on this GH5 HLG series, we are going to be looking at the color correcting and color grading potential of the HLG color profile. Now, this is going to be a highly detailed one because there's vector scopes involved, there's waveform involved, exposure, all this technical jargon, and I don't want you to get overwhelmed. So please, Sit back, relax, look at the examples, listen to how I'm talking about it and see if it makes sense to you because it's really not that complicated once you kind of get used to the idea. But generally speaking, it's really up to your personal preferences. And of course, your eye is going to determine which one is the best one. So to begin this video, I want to play a little game. So what I want you guys to do is in the comment section, I'm going to show you three full on examples of color grades that I did to the exact same starting basic footage and I want to see can you figure out which one is actually HLG and what are the other two in terms of the GH5's own color profile so here we go let's show you the examples Okay, so those are the examples and I'm gonna ramble a little bit because I really want you guys to go down into the comment section and tell me, did you actually figure out which one was HLG out of the three examples? Because when it comes down to it, if you are just watching a TV show and you're just looking at it for face value what it is, chances are you're really not gonna know if they shot it on some cheap camera with Rec. 709 codec or if they shot it in HDR, what have you, because you have nothing to compare it to. But maybe your eyes are super super trained and you were like, no, that one was definitely HLG. I swear it. Okay. So hopefully you have already gone down into the comments and placed your, um, your guesses. So here are your answers. Number one was HLG. Number two was natural profile. Number three was HLG again. What's the difference? Well, the first one, the HLG was purposely exposed a little bit under because remember when you take a Rec 2020 and you put it into a Rec 709 uh, color uh, project, your everything's gonna jump up. So what I purposely did was I exposed my face around IRE 25 to 30, knowing that when I put it into a Rec 709 timeline, it's gonna bump it up to basically IRE 40, 50, and a little bit over, which is basically where you want the skin tones. The third HLG, the third example, that is the one where I purposely already exposed my face to IRE 40 and 50 within the waveform already and had to pull it back down to put it into the same results. So as you take a look at how these two actually work, you'll notice that the HLG that's underexposed is going to have a much more contrasty look that's actually sort of similar to the natural color profile, whereas the HLG that was exposed to the right actually seems 
more softer in a way in terms that it doesn't have a harsh contrast to it. So there's two distinctively different looks and I kind of believe that the reason this is is because when you start exposing down towards the shadows it's a little bit more compressed so the roll off is not going to be as smooth as if you shot it closer off to the right. So if we take a look at all three side to side you can kind of see how it differs and generally speaking whatever it is that you want to film, you're going to have to decide with HLG. Do you want to do expose under or do you want to expose to the right and expose over? Because they're going to give you very distinctively different looks because I couldn't quite get um, the HLG that was exposed to the right to have that hard hitting contrast without doing something completely wonky with the curves and it just didn't really work out. So in my mind, it's two very distinctive looks. Now, of course, people are going to say, well, wait a minute, if you underexpose, you're going to hit that noise. And yes, you definitely will in certain situations. Now, it's only going to really show up if you try to color the shadows in a way. So in the teal and orange example, that lovely Michael Bay look, you definitely see that on my shadow side of my face, that noise is there because you're exposing the shadow to hit some sort of teal color. So you will see it. And but in the other ones where you're crushing the noise away, you're not going to see it. So again, this is something that you have to understand and kind of predetermine. Do you want to shoot exposed to the right for the scene or do you want to underexpose it for the scene? Because they're going to give you two very different looks of how it handles your color grade. Now, as far as color correcting in terms of white balance, let's say you extremely messed up your white balance and everything is blue when it should be, you know, natural. So what I found out was that the natural color profile does a significantly easier job at correcting a extreme screw up of white balance versus versus HLG in a Rec 709 timeline. So with the natural color profile, all I really had to do was move the color wheels over to the orange and reds, and that pretty much did it. Whereas the HLG, I had to move it towards the orange and reds. I had to mess with the saturation levels between the mids, lows, and highs, and then I had to do some balancing of the curves, and in the end, it still didn't look the same. Now, granted, it was taken at different times of the day, but I'm judging it based on my face it just still did not look the same. Even though the vector scopes showed that it was more or less in line where it needs to be, it just didn't look like well, the original footage. So my guess is, is that because we're in a Rec. 709 space, the Rec. 2020 um, HLG is having a hard time navigating through all that extra color information to confine it back into the Rec. 709. I think this is going to be different if you were doing a straight on HDR um, timeline in the project where your source footages are both HDR and you're working in that space. I think it might be a little bit easier. Correct me if I'm wrong, but because this video series is based on people using a Rec. 2020, confining it into a Rec. 709 space to get the extra benefits of what HLG gives, this is the official testing bed of what I want to do. Because I don't think a lot of us are really shooting HDR just yet, but we will get there eventually. So what's the bottom line here? Should you shoot in HLG or should you shoot in like a natural color profile when it comes to color correcting, color grading? Well, the answer is not very cut and dry because generally speaking, when you look at how well it accepts the color grades and the color correction, they both do quite well and they basically can offer more or less the same look, but it depends on your eye if you like the more contrasty look or the less contrasty look of the HLG. So that's something that you have to determine. But where it actually stands for me is that you need to treat HLG as it's not raw, so you can't just go and push everything all over the place. But what HLG does very well versus the natural color profile is because of its extra dynamic range and it's just general abilities because you actually retain a lot of good detail from I would say IRE 20 to IRE 95. Within that range, and if you start shifting things around into the other spots, the detail doesn't seem to get lost for versus natural, where at, when you get close to IRE 90, a lot of detail is lost. And same thing kind of sort of with the shadows, but not as much, but you do lose detail. So if you start pushing things around, you're gonna get that really weird blotch of just 
nothingness and everything is flat. So the HLG does really awesome in that regard in terms of retaining details throughout the entire waveform range. Now, I just specifically said if you wanted to shoot between IRE 20 and 95, because that's generally where you escape the noise floor. So you're gonna get a much cleaner image when you expand it back out to the full range, or maybe that's just where you're gonna stay depending on your actual scene. However, if you want the really, really full dynamic range, then I would say go ahead and shoot from zero to 95 or even up to zero to 100. Because again, if you're not gonna be pushing things around and you dialed in, all the lighting setups to exactly where you need it to be, then you're going to be able to take advantage of that entire range with awesome detail and awesome color information. And that basically leads to the major point of all of this. To get the best out of any camera, don't fix it in post. Don't do it. You should try your best to get the exact same look that you want in the camera right away. Now, what do I mean by this? I mean, again, you need to make sure, okay, this face should be exposed at IRE 40 or 50, or maybe I want to go higher or lower depending on the thing, whatever it is. Your subject should already be exposed the way you want it. Your shadows are exposed the way you want it and your highlights are exposed the way you want it. If you're playing with colors, let's say the whole Michael Bay look, then you need to, um, you need to start playing with lights. You need to hit your actor with an orange light and you need to somehow get some teal going on in the background. And then in post, you don't have to take this image that was shot with a clean white balance and then start stretching it into the teal and orange space. You can essentially try to get it close and therefore all you really need to do is do little minor tweaks, little minor tweaks, not, not some crazy um, color pulls. And if you do those minor tweaks, you're going to technically end up with a much cleaner, crisper, full detailed image where you're not pulling the codec left and right. Because again, we're shooting in a compressed format because this is all coming out of the camera internally. I'm not shooting it into ProRes. I'm not shooting it into an Atomos Shogun. So it's actually quite cool to know that even this little compressed codec could actually give you that much information. But the bottom line of everything really is, if you have the time, or if you have the, the, the wheels in your brain to really get everything down as close as you can into the camera, then you can really, really take advantage of how the HLG actually works. Because of how much uh, retention you have in the highlights and details versus natural, that nice detailed dynamic range, that roll off, ultimately I think gives a much more quote unquote cinematic look, but then again, depending on your scene, you might want something more contrasty, so you might actually purposely underexpose your HLG. So again, uh, I this is awesome. I really love the fact that the GH5, without paying for V-Log, gives you HLG, and that it has this awesome dynamic range full with detail, and that it's able to actually produce these um, looks that I did just really quickly, and that it doesn't look bad, it looks good. So. In general, I would say HLG might actually be a very good general codec for cinematic use because you do have the ability to use between uh, exposed to the right or exposed to the left and get very similar different looks. If you expose to the left, you're gonna have even more room to do something towards the highlights depending on what your scene is doing. Or if you're shooting outside and everything is exposed to the right, then you're gonna get what I would consider like the romantic comedy look. If you take a look at one of my favorite romantic comedies, You Got Mail, anytime they're outside, it's fully saturated, nothing is contrasty except for maybe what the clothes they're wearing, but everything is just up there. And the, to know that HLG can basically retain everything and have a nice saturated color look, you don't really have to do much. Just nail your white balance and you're good to go and you can play with saturations later or, you know, of course, you can dress your person, uh, your actor in the right amount of clothes to v make their skin more vibrant or contrast to the background. Again, everything that I'm saying right now is get it right in the camera the first time. Nail your white balance, nail your exposure in terms of what the subject is exposed at, what the background shadows are exposed at, what the background highlights are exposed at, and only finesse it in post just a little bit so you get the best out of everything. But 
if you don't do that and you just shoot a blank uh, slate like this and then you color grade it, HLG still does an amazing job. And hey, that's it for this week, everybody. If this video has been the final decider, if you're gonna buy a GH5 or GH5S, I would truly appreciate it if you check out my Amazon affiliate links down below. Again, this costs nothing extra to you. It just gives me a little compensation so I can continue making videos like this for you. And as always, if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave it down below. I will get to them as fast as I can. And until then, like, subscribe, and share, and I will see you guys next week.